As you learn about the narcissistic pattern, it's also wise to reflect on the much healthier alternatives. Now below, you're going to find a link to my new extensive course called Ready, Set, Connect. It addresses both the mindset and the skills involved in gratifying relationships, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. Let's begin today with a very straightforward pronouncement about what we're dealing with with narcissists, and that is these are individuals who are not exactly what you would refer to as psychologically astute. Now, I'm going to take that notion and build upon it, and uh, we're going to see where this leads us, because I want you to see that because of their lack of psychological insight, it, it causes them to not see what you and I would consider to be a glaringly obvious pattern. We're going to get to that in just a moment. But first, before we do, I want to see if I can just uh, very briefly walk you through the identifying features of narcissism. And as I do, I want you to ask the simple question. Do these ingredients show any evidence of growth? Do these uh, ingredients show any evidence of uh, maturity and decency? And then we're going to uh, pick up and run from there. For example, when we talk about narcissism, we're talking about someone who wants to deny other individuals the freedom to be who they are so that they can control them. Now, pause right there. Does that make sense? And the narcissist thinks does to me. Or when we talk about narcissism, we're also talking about individuals who have very low levels of empathy. In healthy relationships, you want to try to know other individuals from their vantage point so there can be a, a fair-minded exchange. So when you have that low willingness to go there, does that make sense? Does that lead anything good? And again, the narcissist says, I'm okay with that, <laughs> or let's keep going. Uh, when we talk about narcissism, we're talking about people who are very needy emotionally, and they have to have large amounts of, of uh, affirmation, and it's all very self-oriented. Do you think I'm okay? Do you think that I'm better than everybody else? And as a result, we can ask, well, is that the mark of somebody who's really got their act together? No, but the narcissist is like, well, I like it when everybody just admires me because I, I want to be entitled. Or when we talk about narcissism, selfishness drives their decision-making rather than goodness. And the narcissist is like, hmm, that works for me. I like that. I don't care about you. And then in addition, narcissists are quite willing to use and exploit and manipulate. And let's just pause with our question there. Is that something that is, is healthy and good? And the narcissist is like, well, works for me. Or in addition, we can say that they have this need to maintain this false attitude of haughtiness and superiority over others. It's not healthy. And then on top of that, then they hide behind the veneer of a false self. I mean, when you take a look at all of these primary indicators that says this is what narcissism is, there's not one single thing in that formula that says this is really good. Now, taking it a little bit further, though, we're going to say that when a narcissist looks at how they approach life, what they'll do is they'll say, yep, I'm on the winning team here, and uh, I'm, I, I like who I am, and I like the way that I do things, and um, what we're looking at is what, what I see here, unlike how the narcissist interprets it, I see here a pattern of life that's a formula for disaster, and here's the pattern that they are stuck in that they absolutely cannot see. Not only do the, uh, the ingredients of narcissism uh, lead to uh, disaster, but it turns into a pattern of psychological decay. The, the longer they stay in this kind of mindset, then they get worse and worse, and these, these ingredients lend themselves to all sorts of other unhealthy ingredients. All along the way, though, uh, they, they still proclaim themselves to be the gold standard. Now, when we talk about psychological decay, uh, what we're talking about, and you're just looking at the word decay, uh, it means they're going to fall into their own personal ruin. It means they decline in their own personal uh, emotional and psychological healthiness. 
It means that they have a decomposing of who they are from the inside out. It means that they waste away a good opportunity because it just becomes less and less and less effective. Now, uh, all along the way, we're going to say they don't see this. Uh, notice that when you talk with narcissists about these ingredients that I just mentioned, they're going to insist uh, that they, uh, they have the right kind of attitude. They will consistently uh, contribute to the downfall of other individuals. And yet, like I say, they declare themselves to be the standard bearer. Now, Whenever you uh, you try to explain to a narcissist, hey, what you've got going on doesn't work, you're going to get one of two responses. Uh, typically, you're going to get both. One is they blame. Well, I wouldn't have any problems in my life if it weren't for you or all these other uh, people in my life that had brought me some ruin. And then second, they project. Uh, in other words, they'll see in you what they don't want to come to terms with on the inside of themselves. Well, uh, if you would get your act together, then I would be okay. If you quit doing this, this, and this, then uh, I'd be fine. And that's part of the decay. They simply will not say, I've got to come to terms with this before it gets any worse. Now, taking this uh, notion that says that they're in a pattern of psychological decay, I want you to see that uh, along with these identifying characteristics of narcissism are what we might refer to as auxiliary traits that come along. For example, uh, when a person is uh, all the way into their narcissism, they wind up having patterns with a lack of civility. They don't treat people well, and they don't care. They, they, they lose their sense of conscientiousness. In addition, uh, as part of their decay, they go deeper and deeper into their own anger. They're very easily triggered. They carry a, a, an undertow of frustration. Uh, also, uh, as part of their decay, they go further and further into patterns of cynicism. Uh, they can be very critical toward other individuals, and they've taken the, the notion of finding fault in others to an art form, if you will. Likewise, part of their decay uh, is illustrated by the fact that they're very willing to insult other individuals. And when you think about it, okay, I'm going to insult you, and then that's going to motivate you to be a better person. That's, that's the mark of somebody who's going backwards, not forward in, the, in their way of doing life. Likewise, as part of their decay, they hold on to rigid opinions to the extent that they're stubborn and closed-minded. They can't complex. Uh, they can't uh, deal with complexity. Uh, they're very simplistic in their reasoning. Uh, they, in fact, it uh, gets to the point of being very childish. And then they wind up becoming easily dismissive toward other individuals. So whatever possibilities of growth is there goes down by the wayside. And as part of this pattern of psychological decay. What you'll notice is they can't stop the progression. It just keeps going on and they build on it with all of their rationalization. And then not only do they not grow, then they go deeper and deeper into pulling you into their pathology. Now, you see, I would like to ask that question. Can't you see, you know, to the narcissist, can't you see that you're being swallowed up by your own self-destruction? And they would say, no, I don't see that. Or I might ask them, well, do you, are you happy with the way that you're living? Look at all these characteristics that I've just mentioned. Do you like being the poster child for psychological rot? And it's like, it works for me. And, and that illustrates that uh, they're so oblivious. They have that lack of psychological astuteness uh, and awareness. And what we find is over time, complete superficiality takes over and whatever uh, possibility for reasoning that they may have, it dissolves. That's the decay that I'm talking about. The narcissist says, I don't need to learn. I don't need to hear what you have to say. Uh, I only have one real problem and that is I'm surrounded by idiots and I don't need you to try to tame me. So when I say that they're in a pattern uh, that has all of these ingredients that are not healthy, and then they take it and they say, yeah, this is, this is something that's really good. You can see that that, uh, that psychological uh, regression has so completely taken over that uh, they're identified by total oblivion. So what we're going to say is the, the longer a person goes deeper and deeper into this uh, uh, psychological decay, they actually wind up becoming cartoon characters. And when I say cartoon characters, uh, you know, when you watch the cartoons, they're, they're distorted pictures 
of foolishness. That's what we mean when, uh, when we say they're cartoonish, that's the decay. Now, uh, narcissists have lost sight of your humanity. They don't treat you well because they can't come to terms with their humanity and what needs to be adjusted. That's what's going on. They're going to try to make you out to be the problem. But I think that as you're able to see this, uh, this issue of ongoing psychological decay, and then as you commit yourself to the opposite, which is nurturance and, uh, and fertilizing the healthy characteristics, uh, it's going to cause you to realize I'm going in a much different direction. Thank you. And I can't afford to have somebody who's in this pattern to be uh, whispering in my ear telling me how I'm supposed to live. So I'm hoping that you can see what psychological decay is. And I'm hoping you can determine I stand for the opposite, which is psychological flourishment. And if that person wants to remain in their pattern of decay, I think it's sad to the point of pitiable but I can't let that individual be the one who's going to establish my pace. I have much more that I want to accomplish that's forward moving, not backwards moving. That's building up, not uh, rotting from the inside out. I hope this gives you some awareness of what you're dealing with. And as, uh, as you look at this, I'm hoping it can make you think, you know, I want to stay educated so that I can be an ongoing learner. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so, and we're going to keep more videos coming toward you. Likewise, if you uh, would uh, have the desire and need, I would encourage you to seek out some therapy. Sometimes when you're with these individuals, they can wear you down with all of their rotten, and I, I mean that sincerely, I mean, uh, rotten reasoning. And uh, sometimes it would be helpful for somebody to uh, to work it out with you. I, actually, I'm I, received a message from somebody that said, um, you know, thank you so much for referring us to uh, therapy. I found a, a, a therapist on uh, the uh, betterhelp.com website that you recommend, and it's been so good. So I, I love hearing that kind of stuff. You know, I've been sponsored by the people at BetterHelp for years. Uh, it's affordable, it's accessible, and uh, there are plenty of people that you can choose from. And, and if that's a, a need that you would have, I would strongly encourage you to do that. Go through the link that we have below, and you'll get a 10% discount on the first month and, and get the assistance you need. Likewise, I have my courses uh, that I put together. They're very extensive, and uh, they're meant to uh, address these kind of issues we're talking about. Each course has at least 25 videos with written documentation, guided questions, ready, set, connect. It's about making good and healthy connections. Uh, this is me about establishing your boundaries, free to be, finding yourself, uh, despite those controllers. And then we also have my webinars. We have my podcast, many articles that are all available on the, the website. And then we have my books, so plenty of resources. Gus has some itching going on there. Uh, hope it's okay. I'll, I'll take care of him in just a moment. Um, uh, uh, thank you for letting me be on your journey with you. And I'm hoping that as you see their, uh, you know, consumption with the decay, I'm hoping it gives you the motivation that says, I want to go in a much better direction. I want to be a person of DRC, dignity, respect, and civility. And in doing so, I hope it establishes you to be that person of steadiness that the narcissist is not able to match pitch on. But nonetheless, I'm hoping it takes you to a good place of peace.